Hi, this video is about um, quantitative research and uh, how to write uh, your research papers. So, rational, paano nga ba magsulat ng rational? So, again, this is read as rational, hindi rational ha? Okay. So, ang rational, meron siyang at least four paragraphs. Okay, four paragraphs. Yung first paragraph niya is about the problem of your variable 2 and its importance. When you say variable 2, or uh, sometimes they call it as um, the dependent variable, okay, dependent variable, or variable B, or second variable. So, if your working title is uh, parental involvement and self-esteem, so your variable A or variable 1 is parental involvement. Your variable 2 is self-esteem. Or your variable B is self-esteem. Okay. So, if you write your first paragraph, and that's your working title. So, your first paragraph should be about the problem of your, uh, the problem and the importance of self-esteem. Okay. The problem and the importance of self-esteem. Pwede rin sa first paragraph, pwede niyong i-define shortly or briefly yung self-esteem. Okay, so, but your first paragraph should be about a uh, brief description of self-esteem and um, yung problem at saka importance ng self-esteem or yung variable B. Okay, yung second paragraph naman, it's the importance of your second variable. So, wala, hindi ka na mag-mention ako ano bang problema natin sa variable B mo, ah, variable A mo. Okay, variable 1 yan. And, uh, you can also briefly describe your second, vari uh, your first variable, variable 1. Again, tandaan, first paragraph is variable 2 or variable B. Second paragraph is variable 1 or variable A. So, if your working title is on parental involvement and self-esteem, so your second paragraph should be about the uh, parental involvement. So, you can briefly define or describe parental involvement as used in your study and um, cite the importance. Ano bang kahalagahan ng parental involvement? And then, you connect you connect the two variables. So, connect mo yung parental involvement sa self-esteem. Okay. Then the third paragraph is about the problem of your second variable. Yung nasa first paragraph mo which is self-esteem. Yung third paragraph, balikan mo siya. Um, ngayon naman sa third paragraph, isight mo yung problem ng self-esteem in the local setting where the study will be conducted or uh, citing an authority. So ibig sabihin um Ano bang problema natin sa self-esteem dito sa Pilipinas? Or kung makakita kayo ng study on Davao City, Davao City na ng setting, mas okay yun. Okay? So, mamaya papakita ko sa inyo mga sample on um, uh, for, for the rational first paragraph, second, third, and the last one. Okay? So, eto, third paragraph, problem of uh, the second variable in the local setting in the Philippines. Okay. And you have to cite a study um, on that. So, hindi lang dapat galing sa sarili, ha? Um, the, the, the things or the information that you are going to discuss on uh, your rational, uh, specifically sa first, second, third, at saka sa parts ng last paragraph, should be uh, with reference. Okay? Hindi lang galing sa sarili, kundi hindi um, supported by evidences. And uh, saan galing yung mga evidences na yon? Galing sa mga studies na na-conduct na and na-publish. Okay? So, mamaya ituturo ko sa inyo kung paano gagawin, paano gagawin yan. So, yung last paragraph naman, it's the presentation of research gap and urgency of the study. So, when we say um, research gap, research gap, um, magbibigay ako ng example, ito yung mga um, yung kulang sa research. So, sasabihin mo, marami ng research na ginawa about parental involvement. Marami na rin research yung ginawa about self-esteem. Pero, wala pa akong nakitang research in the local setting, ha, sa Pilipinas, na pinagsama yung dalawa. Or, wala pa akong nakitang research 
na about sa relationship ng parental involvement and ng self-esteem sa local setting. Okay? So, yun ang research gap. And, uh, kaya, yung urgency of the study. Kaya, gusto kong i-conduct ang study na, uh, na ito to determine if there is really a significant relationship between the two variables. So, ganun yun. Okay, mama, ipapakita ko example. Ah, ito na pala. Okay. So, this is an example of the first paragraph in the rational. So, uh, again, first paragraph is the problem of the second variable and its importance. So, second variable or variable B. Okay. So, this is taken from the study of Munria about... Um, uh, ano ba ito? Uh, work commitment. And uh, about yata ito sa change readiness ng mga empleyado sa... Uh, in 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 an organization okay. in the Philippines. So, basahin natin. So, this uh, this paragraph is about the second variable, which is the change readiness of the employees. Okay. So, uh, changes that are taking place in an organization greatly affect employees' work attitude toward or due to the fear of the unknown. That's from Fur 2014, Terry 2016, Tanner 2015. Okay. So, eto ngayon, ma'am, ano yan? So, these are the references. Alam niyo na ito kasi, um, uh, di ba, na-discuss na ito. Meron na kayong research one in your qualitative, uh, qualitative research. So, it's just like your RRL. Okay? Yung mga referencing na ganyan. Um, changes that are taking place. This sentence right here, or this thought right here, is not coming from the author. Okay. This might comes from the author, but um, the author supported this with evidences. So, ang nagsabi talaga nito na ang change daw in an organization naka-apekto sa empleyado, sa attitude ng empleyado towards work because of the fear of the unknown. Ito siya ay sinabi or na-mention ni na Fur 2014, Perry 2016, Tanner 2015. Okay. Employees feel uncertain about what lies ahead and beyond their comfort zone. So, ito namang um, thought na ito ay galing kay Kose and Ingalls 2016, Sensei 20, uh, 2009. This particular situation, according to Dahl 2011 and Sha 2009, can intensify the sense of indecision, difficulty, and uneasiness amongst workforce. When these feelings arise, Employees' work attitude is hugely affected. Um, let's do away with this type of referencing. Yung parang, uh, yung sasabihin, according to author year, author year. So, hindi natin ito gagamitin dito ngayon sa rational. Gagamitin natin ito sa um, RRL na. So, for rational sa so chapter 1, Ito lang ang gagamitin natin. Yung thought muna, yung sentence, pagkatapos niyan, before ang period ng sentence, dito ilalagay ang references. Okay. And one more thing, in writing your chapter 1, in writing your research paper, you have to use third person. Third person. So, bawal yung mga words na we, us, our, um, yun, yung mga uh, sec, uh, first, uh, first and second person, bawal yun. Okay. So, walang we, us, walang I, walang tayo. Okay? So, this, uh, sana tayo. Martin Jones and Callan 2005 averred that organizational change is a natural occurrence, but how employees react to the change makes the difference. A negative, oh, tandaan ninyo, the, the, the first paragraph should be about the problem and the importance of um, the second variable. In this case, yung second variable niya ay change readiness ng mga empleyado. Okay, sabi niya dito. Um, so, an, a negative response to change may lead employees to leave their work as they become disappointed of what are happening in their organization. So, that's a problem already. Okay? That's the problem already. Those who will not leave may display work inefficiency and underproductivity. Changes such as this, according to Dahl 2011, may bring about harmful effects, especially on the mental health of the employees. So again, 
dito niya sinight yung problem. Okay? Yung problem about change readiness ng mga empleyado. Paano nakaka-apekto yun? Okay? And gaano ka-importante yung change readiness ng mga empleyado? And so, um, again, i-remind ko kayo that this paragraph, uh, your, your rationale should be supported by support, supported by the uh, evidences. So, dapat andito yung mga references. Let me show you another example of um, the first paragraph of the rationale. This is taken from the study School Climate in Mathematical Dispositions of Grade 10 Students. Um, so, the second variable is mathematical disposition. So, the first paragraph or this paragraph should be about the problem on mathematical disposition. So, it says here, one of the several factors that affect students' mathematics achievement is their disposition towards, uh, towards mathematics. So, this thought uh, comes from ANCO, 1996. Um, however, students tend to have a negative disposition towards the subject as the misconception that mathematics is a difficult subject and that it is okay not to be good at math is widely accepted because of the mindset that a person is either born with mathematical ability or not. So this is already a problem in the mathematical disposition of a student. This misconception affects the student's attitudes towards learning mathematics and subsequently leads to a negative mathematical disposition. So this is from AAMT 2015. So again, uh, lahat na nang dito ay... Uh, supported by the evidence. I mean, um, eto, hindi galing sa author ng current study yung mga nandito sa rational. So, eto yung mga nabasa niyang problem about mathematical disposition. And, um, specifically, galing sa AAMT 2015 at kay ANCO 1996. Okay? So, ganyan magsulat ng first paragraph ng rational. Second par before we go to second paragraph, turuan ko muna kayo kung paano yun gagawin yung mga may uh, referencing, uh, references. Okay, yung mga referencing na ganun. Um, let's take for example, um, eto, yung uh, mathematical dispositions. Halimbawa, gusto mong uh, sabihin, problems on mathematical dispositions. So, Let's say, kasali kasi sa mathematical disposition yung interest ng bata sa mathematics. So, ang gawin mo, punta ka ng Google Scholar. Google Scholar. Or pwede rin sa ProQuest, ha? Pwede sa ProQuest. And then, isearch mo um, yung mga keywords. Okay. Ano nga ba yung mga posibleng problema sa mathematical disposition? So, Let's say, uh, students have low interest. Students have low interest in math. Okay. So, bibigyan ka ng mga results, ng mga studies um, about students having low interest in math. So, babasahin mo yan. Okay? So, when students, pwede mo siyang i-open. Um, i-open mo siya in new tab kasi dapat andito pa ito. Um, kasi, when you read this, and kung andito talaga yung sinasabing students have low interest in math, halimbawa, nabasa mo dito sa result, sa abstract niya na ang result nito ay talaga namang students have low interest in math, so, babalikan mo ngayon yan. Okay? And doon mo isight. O, oh, mamaya na yan. So, halimbawa, yun ang hinahanap mo. Gusto mong um, makakita ng evidence or reference na yung um, mga estudyante have uh, low interest in math. So, babasahin mo ngayon yan. Okay? For the sake of uh, the example, ay example lang natin ito, halimbawa, nabasa mo nga dito, no, na ang mga estudyante talaga, nabasa mo dito ng no, mga estudyante ay may low interest in math or uh, low level of mathematical disposition, ganun. So, babalikan mo yan. Tapos, kung magsusulat ka, open ka ng word. Okay? Halimbawa, isulat mo. Uh, start ka na ng pagsusulat ng chapter 1. So, um, students, sabihin mo. So, yung nabasa mo dito sa abstract, 
Okay. So, yung nabasa mo dito, hindi mo kukopyahin ng intuto yan. Hindi mo kukopyahin verbatimly. So, i-rephrase mo yan. Okay. I-rephrase mo. I-restate kung paano mo siya na-understand or kung ano yung thought. Okay. Nang, nang result ng study. So, sabi mo, students have a uh, low interest in um, mathematics. Mathematics. Okay? Before mo i-end yung sentence, ilalagay mo dyan yung reference. Ngayon, yung reference saan mo kukunin, di ba? Ito yung study na yun. And nag-open tayo ng new tab kasi babalikan natin yung original at dito tayo magsasign. You see this quotation mark right here. Yan ang pipundutin natin, i-click to get the referencing styles, the references. So, we have your different referencing formats or referencing styles. Pipiliin natin yung APA, yung APA. So, eto siya. I-click lang natin yan and control C. And then, balik tayo dun sa word na in-open natin. You really have to save your references, ha? Kasi ang last part ng, ng research paper ay yung mga references. Pinaka-importante yan to, av to avoid plagiarism. Okay? And i-paste mo dyan. Ayan na siya. So, yun na yung reference mo. Lahat ng ma-mention mo sa research paper should, um, na galing sa mga studies should be cited and should be in your references. Okay? That's to avoid plagiarism. So, ang gagawin mo, kasi ang kailangan lang naman natin dito, uh, balik tayo sa example, ayan, last name ng author at saka yung year ng publication. Okay? So, we have here, oh, dalawa sila at tatlo pala sila. Okay? Tatlo sila. So, copy-paste mo yan dito. And then, kukunin lang natin yung mga initials nila. Okay. Ayan, si Rininger, si Ewen. Ewen po sa'yo. Okay. Si Ewen and uh, si Lasher. And then, kukunin natin yung parenthesis dito. Ayan. Tapos, may kama yan before the year, ha? Okay. Ayan. So, we have Rininger, Ewen, and Lasher, um, Kama, and then 2002. And then, that's the time na ilalagay mo yung period, uh, meaning end na yan ng sentence. Okay? So, that's how you do it in uh, your uh, rationale and how to cite authors. Right? So, andyan ha, dapat may ref, uh, references na ka-save yan lahat. And then, pwede ka na mag-start ng another paragraph. Or, um, kung ang next sen another paragraph, no, another sentence. Kung ang next sentence mo ay galing pa rin sa kanila. Ay galing pa rin sa kanila. Um, pwede mong sabihin, uh, this study also reveals, uh, this study also shows, or there are, uh, uh, research also shows that blah, 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 blah. Or pwede mo ring, wag halimbawa, there are two sentences or two thoughts coming from this same authors. Okay, pwede mo siya, ilagay mo siya sa end ng thought na galing sa kanila. Okay, so first sentence, second sentence, and then dun mo siya ilagay dun sa last part na ng thought or ng information na kinuha mo galing sa kanila. Okay. So, that's it for um, the referencing or the citation. Now, let's proceed to the second paragraph. Paano ba or ano ba example ng second paragraph? Okay. So, as we have mentioned kanina, yung second paragraph is the importance of variable 1 or variable A. And then, we connect the two variables. Anong connection ng variable 1 sa variable 2? So, uh, this is an example. Congruently, research shows that a positive school climate, uh, this, again, um, ito yung galing sa um, school climate and mathematical disposition. So, yung first paragraph niya about the problem and importance of mathematical disposition. Yung second paragraph is about school climate, yung importance ng school climate, at saka kung paano siya connected dun sa disposition. So, congruently, research shows that a positive school climate affects students' achievement. So, this thought comes from the National School Climate Center 2015. 
such that students who feel safe at school are more likely to have academic success than those who do not. Center of uh, the Study and Prevention of Violence, 1992, Brand Fellner, Shim. Ma'am, bakit dalawa? Bakit parami yan? So, this uh, Center of the Study and Prevention Violence, 1992, is one, one source, one reference. Si Brand Fellner, Shim, Sitzinger, and Dumas, 2003, is another reference. Paano yan? Halimbaw, balik tayo dun sa uh, Google Scholar natin. Eto, pag may nabasa kang isa na tama nga, uh, yun na yung hinahanap mong statement, okay? So, alright, so you cite this one. Halimbawa, etong pangalawa, ganun din ang sinabi niya, the same thought, okay? Nag-support din siya dun sa sinabi nung first na reference mo. Okay, edi... Mas mabuti, marami silang nagsabi noon. So, babalik ka dito, cite mo ulit yung quotation, and then apa, copy-paste, balik ka dun sa word, dun sa work mo. So, um, then, copy-paste mo dito yung another reference, and then, kukunin mo yung mga name ng author at saka yung year. So, ang gagawin mo, semicolon yan, Okay, semicolon. Um, balikan natin yung example. Uh, saan ba yung example? Uh, ito. And then we have here, see, see this? Naka-semicolon yan after ng year. Okay, semicolon. And so, balik tayo dun sa word natin. Okay. So, copy-paste natin. After ng semicolon, ayan na si Garyot. Um, delete natin yung mga initials kasi apelyedo lang ng authors ang kailangan natin. Apelyedo ng authors. Okay. And, yung, uh, yung end ha, it's an ampersand symbol. Ampersand symbol yan. So, Hindi yung word na A and D na end. So, hindi yon So, delete natin yung initials, uh, comma, and then before the year. Okay. So, may dalawang authors ka na, na nagsabi, or dalawang studies ka na, na nagsabi that students have low interest in mathematics. Right? So, balik tayo doon sa second paragraph. Okay. So, again, importance of school climate, ito dapat, and connection of first variable and second variable. Okay. So, for the reasons, okay, for the reason that school climate influences the student's attitude in school, that's from the Dignity Act 2014, schools may, use, uh, may also use climate data to enhance not just intellectual skills, but also dispositions that promotes academic success. So, ito na yung connection ng school climate sa mathematical disposition. Okay? So, schools may also use climate data to enhance not just the intellectual skills, but also dispositions that promotes academic success. Okay, ba? So, connection ng dalawang variables, it's from Cohen, McCloskey, and Pickerel, 2008. Right? So, that's, so that's the second um, second paragraph. Now, the third paragraph, diba? Sabi, ang third paragraph should be about the problem of the dependent variable in the local setting where the study will be conducted, citing an authority. Ito pa rin dapat, um, ano pa rin siya, published study pa rin. So, in the Philippines. So, sabi dito, consequently, the Philippines in its ability to manage change and cultivate opportunity ranked number four among upper middle income countries. This is now going back sa example dun sa um, change readiness. Okay? Change readiness ng employees. Ang example na ito. So, um, cultivate opportunity rank number four. So, this should be about the problem on change readiness ng mga empleyado sa Philippines. While this is true for the country, still many organizations fall short in spawning adequate organizational change readiness. So, yun ang problem sa Pilipinas about organizational change readiness. And a result, 
they encounter setbacks or utter breakdowns when undergoing changes in their organizations. It's from Weiner 2009. Okay? And so on. So, this is now the problem of change readiness among employees in the Philippines. Right? Another example. Okay? This is also in the last paragraph. Uh, Another example for this, oh, one moment. All right, so here is another example of the third paragraph. So this is, again, this is from School Climate and Mathematical Disposition. So the third paragraph should be about the problem of mathematical dispositions of the students in the local setting. Okay, so Philippine setting. So, locally, in a study conducted in, a, in the private colleges and universities in Cabanatuan City, Philippines, it was revealed that college freshman students had low positive attitudes towards mathematics. So, this is already a problem in local setting. Huh? Students having low positive uh, attitudes towards mathematics. So, specifically, students found... So, eto ngayon, di ba sabi, citing an authority or... or with citation yan. So, this um, this result of a study is uh, from Subaya Salangsang and Medrano 2018. So, lahat ng sinabi na nandito, this is a result of a study conducted by Su Subaya Salangsang and Medrano 2018. Okay? So, hindi galing sa author ng uh, current research yan. So, uh, let's continue. Specifically, students found mathematics as their least favorite subject. Although students believed that being good at mathematics would give them more chances of becoming successful, they still did not like the subject and did not enjoy their mathematics classes. The study further revealed that students did not have perseverance towards the subject as they easily gave up when they could not solve a mathematics problem okay so again third paragraph problem about your uh, second variable or variable b in the local setting so you can find this in the results of published studies so again don't balik sa google scholar or sa proquest okay proquest.com right so let's continue third paragraph na yan how about the last paragraph? So, sabi natin kanina, the last paragraph should be about the research gap and the urgency of the study. So, I explain ko briefly yung uh, research gap kanina. And here's an example. While many researchers focus their studies on mathematical dispositions of the students and on factors that affect them, um, ito yung mga studies about mathematical disposition. So, we have your one. Two, uh, three. So I cited here three studies of mathematical dispositions. Bakit tatlo yan? Pwede ang apat, pwede lima. Mas marami, mas mabuti. Kasi sabi ko, many researchers. Okay? Sabi ko, many researchers focus their studies on mathematical dispositions and on factors that affect them. Okay? Ma'am, paano gagawin yan? Of course, balik doon sa Google Scholar or sa ProQuest.com. Okay, so maghanap ng mga studies about your um, variables. So if your study is about um, uh, parental involvement and self-esteem, so maghanap ng studies about parental involvement and uh, an studies about self-esteem. And then isa-site nyo dito. Gawin nyo yung um, paraan ng pagsa-site yung tinuro ko kanina. Okay, sa first part ng video. And so... Hindi pwede na sinabi mo dito, many researchers, tapos ang ilalagay mo, isa lang. Hindi pwede, ha? kasi ang sabi mo, many. So, you, you should support that claim. So, ang sabi dito, marami ng uh, studies about mathematical dispositions, pero the researcher has not come across of a study in the local setting on the relationship of school climate and students' dispositions towards mathematics. Sabi niya, marami na research about mathematical disposition, pero wala pang research in the local setting about uh, the relationship of school climate and mathematical disposition. Kaya, sabi ng researcher, it is for this reason that the researcher 
is interested to determine if there is a significant relationship between school climate and students' mathematical dispositions. So, sa inyo, you, of course, ang pinaka-goal natin ay, ay malaman natin kung meron bang significant relationship yung variable A at saka variable B. Okay, so sabihin nyo, it is for this reason that the researchers are, in, kasi marami kayo, researchers are interested to determine if there is a significant relationship between variable A and your variable B. As a result, this study can help, uh, oh, ano na yung significance ng study nyo, dito nyo na ipapasok. Ano bang kahalagahan ng studies ninyo? So in this case, uh, this study can help teachers and administrators identify the specific factors of their school's climate which may have a significant influence to their students' mathematical dispositions and use this data to help better their mathematics achievement.